According to the National Lightning Safety Institute, one out of every 200 houses will be struck by lightning each year. Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you the grounding rod system we put in. First we went to the highest point in the roof to make sure that the grounding rod's the highest thing on the roof. So the lightning, when it strikes, will be attracted to it alone and then go down in the ground. So first we start by mounting it onto the roof at the base, no more than 20 feet apart. So we mounted it, then we put the swivel, and then with a level we made sure that the rod was even, straight even, with the sky, and then we screwed everything, tightened it, and then the next thing we did was we got the grounding cable. So this is just one continuous piece of uh, copper wire that we unwound and attached to all the lightning rods, and then we strung it down both sides of the house. The next thing we're going to do is uh, attach it to the ground with our grounding rod. Okay. So we have our grounding wire that we've strung around the house. We've got it here. We're going to fasten it to the wall here with Tapcon screws. And then we're going to take it and attach it to this grounding rod. So this grounding rod is located two feet from the, from the edge of the house. We have a measuring tape right here. So we're going to drive it two feet down. We're going to have a two foot hole. And then once that's in there, we're going to attach the grounding wire to it with this fastener. And then we have this, uh, this driver, for once it gets down here, we drive it in with this all the way down. Here's a list of the parts that you'll need. By the end of the video, I'm sure you'll have a very clear understanding of the whole thing. Braided and stranded copper wire with a half inch diameter. 12 inch lightning rod and the mounting bracket. You'll only need the swivel if it's mounted on a pitched roof. Rolling the cable out on the ground makes it a lot easier when you go to pull it up onto the roof. Always better to use a rope to pull the cable up. It makes things a lot easier than trying to carry the whole cable which is very heavy up onto the roof. So I'm going to use this copper hanger strap that I got at Home Depot. It's less expensive than the stuff that they sell at the Lightning Warehouse parts place. And then just these uh, exterior screws. They say that when the copper comes in contact with things like galvanized and other materials other than copper, there's a slight reaction. But um, it's not that big a deal. So anyway, I'll use the copper straps to pin the wire down. And then if there's a slight reaction with the screw head on the strap, it's not that big a deal. Bolt cutters will work to cut this stuff if you don't have the uh, tool for cutting this heavy gauge wire. Just got to go a few times and then wiggle it back and forth and it, uh, it'll break off. Just like that. So we have the ground rod driven in and now we just need to attach the wire to the ground rod with this connector. As deep down as, as we can, two feet is really a optimal. Uh, socket wrench works best for tightening up the bolt down there. It's just too tight to do it with a regular wrench. Okay, we got both sides of the house connected to the ground rods. Anchored nicely to the sides. Here's our lightning rod with the swivel and the mounting plate. You can see we use the swivel because the roof has a pitch. We use some silicone sealant where we made the roof penetrations. And we just use some roofing screws to hold this plate onto the roof. Fairly simple installation and uh, very effective. So there you have it. A simple solution to keep lightning from taking down your house in the event of a lightning strike. Just remember to put those lightning rods no more than 20 feet apart. They can be closer than 20 feet, but not greater than 20 feet apart across the ridge of your roof.